in this episode of Crossover. Xiaojun and Luisa will head to Chaoshan Region in Guangdong Province. They will talk to local entrepreneurs and learn about the impact of the economic reform on regional businesses and local lives. Ah 有文化的加入。Hello and welcome to this special edition of Crossover. I'm Ji Xiaojun. Hello from Beijing. I'm Louisa Li. This is a special edition. We would like to take this opportunity to show you the important role the policy has been playing and the past 40 years in China. Just one example. Now, China's share in the world economy was only 1.8% 1 in 1978. Well, that number was increased to 18% in 2017. And at the same time, the lives of Chinese people have also been transformed on a massive scale. What a staggering growth we're talking about. And to give a clear picture, we're going to be taking our viewers to China's Guangdong province, where we'll be interviewing entrepreneurs and business owners about China's remarkable transformation. But before that, we're going to head into a video to learn more about the region. Let's take a look. Located in China's Guangdong province, Chaoshan is known for its distinct language and unique culture. It consists of three cities, Chaozhou, Jieyang, and Shantou. Chaozhou is renowned for its Kaifang Street, which can be translated as Decorated Archway Street. They were originally built during the Ming and Qing dynasties for recognizing local Chaozhou people's achievements and honor. Standing the Han River nearby is the 800-year-old Guangji Bridge. It is one of China's four most famous ancient bridges. Jieyang is the most populous city within the region. It is hometown of many overseas Chinese in Southeast Asia. Historically, Shantou was a small fishing village. In 19th and 20th century, it developed into a major port, packed with cargo ships from all around the world. During that period of time, the city played quite an important role in China's global trade. Shantou was also designated as one of the first five special economic zones in the early 1980s. Its objective is to attract foreign investment and promote industrial development. So, um, what is your impression of Chaoshan? Xiaojun, it was my first time in Chaoshan region, and I felt people were very warm and hospitable. Mm. So we certainly had the experience to really feel the China's southern hospitality. What did you think of it? Well, my impression of people in that region, they are very good at doing businesses. And when they're offered just one opportunity, they'll take it. Well, that is obvious with the uh, next story and our interview with Madam Huang.
established your business in 1979. That was exactly one year after the opening of policy was adopted in China. That was very quick. At that's it. That was a natural development. And how many people did you employ at that time? 那就有一百多个人我们手工做我们不是要厚道要硬烫啊洗水啊一条龙包装出口啊这样子就一百多个人在做做到九五年才开始在转湖装毛衣当时要是做抽沙整个湖匠整个朝上大地都在给我拿
，是谁才是道？因为他去了分化到每个国家去吧。嗯。啊，比如迪拜，我们说到迪拜，他要分化到中东好多国家去。Yes, exactly, and that's like a combination of online or tradi and traditional ways of doing business. They probably will be in contact with the online, but at the same time, they need to come over here to actually see it, to touch it before they make a deal. In the very beginning, it was also OEM. You were producing for other brands, but now you have your own brand. 自己的品牌是从才零五年才开始，刚好我那个女儿在美法国读那个服装设计。然后我们就商量，我们在法国注册一个品牌，我觉得有品牌才有未来。还有我们开会比较多，就是听我们国家的政策啊，都是说要扶持这个自主品牌啊，嗯，啊，就把品牌做起来了。嗯。Well, Madam Huang mentioned Canton Fair. That's extremely important in China's economy, especially for its exports. I don't know, maybe since 1950s and 60s, it's been there. And the development of itself is also a vivid reflection of the development of the export-oriented economy in China. And it's not just a one-way traffic. We're seeing more and more foreign businesses investing in China. And China is also encouraging that as well. I mean, take the International Import Expo, for example, in Shanghai that yes. was held in November. That is also a sign that China is ready for this kind of change. Indeed. I mean, it's always been a two-way traffic, but with the holding of that import expo, officially organized by the government, I guess China is sending out the message very clearly to the rest of the world, we are now ready to import even more. In the interview, Madame Huang mentioned that she is creating her own brand. Is that surprising to you? Uh, not really, because when you mention China is the manufacturing center in the world, probably you would say China is the OEM center of the world. But at the same time, China is not only providing manufacturing all these high-quality products and sending them, you know, everywhere in the world. At the same time, people just like Madame Huang herself. A lot of business people are realizing the importance of having their own brands, and Madame Huang is doing exactly that. And you know, what I remember when I was young, I would turn the product over, and I would see made in China. Now, maybe that label will change someday. Maybe it will be designed in China. Designed and produced and consumed in, in China <laughs> as well. In China. <laughs> yes. It seems in the very beginning, everyone was uh, looking outside, looking overseas, targeting the overseas market. But it seems these days, a lot of entrepreneurs, are just like yourself, start to look back to the domestic market. Why is this happening? Because our Chinese GDP is always growing. Ah, every person's income is also high. It's not just this one. Next year, it's going to be another one. It seems we have great potential with the domestic market. Do you have any comments about your generation of entrepreneurs who's been witnessing and participating in the development of China's economy? 就是我们这一代开始开始创业，真的比现在的这要辛苦很多。像当时，交通也不方便，我们去深圳要坐了差不多一天的车啊，来回都一天还不止的，当时是很不方便的。我们这一代的就是艰苦、吃苦耐劳，并这个信用，嗯，还有哪里有问题我们去处理。有时一一一个晚上都没有睡几个钟的，嗯，真的，我们这一代这一代很辛苦。In the interview, Madame Huang also talks about how transportation was so inconvenient back in the days. Oh, I had the same experience when I had to travel as a student from my hometown to Beijing. At the time, it would take me 30 hours to get here from one place to another. And now, the same journey, it will take me something like six, six and a half hours. So from train to high speed rail, 30 hours to now six hours. Indeed. To put it into perspective, I just want to let the viewers know mm. about the growth of the infrastructure here in China. You can pretty much get to any cities in China via the high speed rail or via the plane. So it's actually a remarkable transformation. And I don't know if it is true or not, but there is a uh, crazier plan that was announced a few days ago by specialists, maybe not by the government yet. Uh, there will be a faster train. The ultra high speed rail, I heard. 4,000 kilometers an hour. Wow, is that even possible? Nothing is impossible. <laughs> Let's take a break, and then when we come back, we'll share with you more interviews with entrepreneurs from that region. Stay with us, we'll be right back.
from a small factory of 30 people to now list a company of about 1,000 employees, let's meet the legendary entrepreneur. Hello, Mr. Tsai. Thank you for joining us today. I tour around your showroom today, and I saw that you have a lot of products targeting a lot of different countries, and you really have an extensive line of production here. But it wasn't always like this, I imagine. What was it like before, and how did you first get into the ceramic industry? Kang 客户的需求，我们了解到他们那边这个丰收习惯是什么，他喜欢的是什么，我们自己研发生产，销售到他那边。So you mentioned that you do your own design now. This one on the table is one of your first productions. 对，So this is very Chinese theme. About the products now, how do they look like? Why is this change? Why is it from you created something that's more Chinese themed to something that's more Western themed? 后来这个我们可以到国外去，我们都到那边去了解他们的风俗习惯，这个到他们需要现在喜欢这些东西，我们就抓这些东西给他们。Is that because your customers have shifted from from those who like the Asian style products before to now modern style？不是改变，因为现在特别是这些工艺品的东西。他就是一段时间喜欢这个，一段时间喜欢那个，就是什么时代他们就喜欢什么，什么时候他就喜欢什么。现在都有一个淘汰的，我们就就是按市场的需求去这个研发生产我们这些哎给客户。You've been in this industry for thirty some years. In terms of our customers, what was the biggest change? So where are these mostly in the western part or in Asia? Like where are your customers or is it around the world? Since the opening up to the outside world and since the economic reform, what was the biggest challenge for you? Did you have to change up your business strategy? Since nowadays you don't have to follow orders anymore, you can freely sell your products. Does that mean that you also upgraded your equipment and your facilities to meet the demand? Yes. At first, it was all people. But then, we are now working on the new work. It's all about the new work. So most of our products are handmade or machine-made, or is it a mix of both? We look at the products. Some products are handmade and the products are combined. Some products are not handmade. Some products are handmade. With the opening up, what does it mean to the whole industry of the ceramic production?
You have your own design department. What kind of trend do you guys follow, or what kind of design do you guys do? 一开始我们是模仿，按客户的样品来生产。后来呢，我们就自己研发，根据市场的变化、市场的需求，我们设。This whole business model has kind of shifted. Before you were uh, just taking orders from other people, now you are kind of setting the trend in, in a way. Can you say that? 根据市场的变化，我们提前根据市场的需求，我们就研发。这些研发团队都是引领消费设计。It is evident that we're seeing a growth in your business, but let's talk about the exporting part. Before then, you had to go through like a state-run company to export the products. What is the situation like right now? Can you explain to us? 计划经济的时候，就是要我们生产的都要靠政府的批文，我们就到这个进出口公司给我们这个批文，我们才能生产。现在呢，这个我们就可以。出到国外去展览，到广交会这起展览，而且呢都是这起出口。我们现在就比以前哪批，我们更新啊，就最起码我们的生产量翻了上百倍，而且几百倍。Since the whole transformation, what was the biggest challenge for you and the biggest advantage? 这个挑战呢，其实我公司从开始就。这个有挑战，没有挑战就没有进步。挑战是一个机遇，我跟同行也是，也是天天都是在竞争，在挑战。这样对我们公司每一个人都好，我们就必须你做好你的东西，才能这个争取到市场的份额，也才能到今天引领消费者的消费。But at the same time, the opening up, you're also competing with the rest of the world. What does that mean to you and to your company? This competition is a good thing. It's like the driving force behind this upgrade. No competition, no advantage. You are doing your best. 都涨的份额比较大，你就必须根据市场的变化去认认真真去做。You have customers across、uh, the world, 92 countries.、Uh, how about here in China? Are you thinking of expanding your market share here in China? 对，准备扩张，就是我们就先从这个酒店用车啊，特别是高档酒酒店用车先入手。第二呢，就是。又销售到这个全国这些社民啊，家庭用品，这两方面一起做。What is your future plan and what is your outlook on the ceramic industry as a whole? 陶瓷是我们中国发明的，我们就是必须承担祖辈给我们留下来这些好东西，我们就发扬壮大。下一步我们是要靠科学来。科学上包括这些机器化、智能化这些，把我们这些陶瓷啊做得更好。When I was at Mr. Tai's showroom, I saw prospective clients from Middle East visiting his showroom. I was quite impressed by that. Their business must be good.、Right? Yeah, indeed. But at the same time, I can't even count how many different types of porcelain they're producing, they're offering to their clients, you know, worldwide these days. And you did mention one point being designed by China, and that's exactly what is happening now with Mr. Tai's company. And before, it's like again OEM, you produce what. They're offered, right? This is the design you do it, and now they're starting their own designs. And I've also realized that you know sometimes their design will become the trend leader in certain markets too. I know that I was quite surprised by that as well.、Mm. I'm also noticing that Mr. Tai's company is going green. Yeah, he was telling me that they are more eco-conscious now, and that they're shifting from using coal to now natural gas. So they're also trying to do something good for the environment. And it's, they're not the only one that's jumping on this eco-friendly bandwagon.、Mm. Other companies in China are also pushing for this green route. Well, I guess that's been pushed by 
a kind of a national movement because you know when the economy is at a certain level, people would certainly love to live a uh, healthier life. Indeed, and it's also important for us to have nice and clean air. Mm. Now let's take a break. We'll be back with more discussions. Stay with us. And welcome back to Crossover. And now let's talk about tea. Yes. Tea is absolutely important in Chinese culture, particularly important in that region. When we were there, they invited us to drink tea. And I think for people in China, drinking tea is a way to socialize. It's also a way for people to bond. It's also a, a nice way to treat your guests. And actually, we did visit a uh, tea master and we wanted to talk with him about how the 40 years of reform and opening up has been impacting his tea business. Yeah, and we also got to up our tea knowledge. Mm. Let's take a look. So the first question is, how did you get into the tea business, becoming now a tea master? Because Wait, tell me more about the change. What's the, uh, the, the transformation process like? It means only the country, the central government, can run a tea business. So it's Xiao Xu, Mr. Ye said that goods were divided into different categories. Mm. Can you tell us more about that? I'm no expert in this either myself, mm. but I did hear that different products at the time were categorized by its significance to the country's national strategy or to the country's uh, economy, say. Steel was in category one. You can imagine how important steel was in, for the country. And I don't understand why they put tea into second category, which means the production, the manufacturing, and also the selling of tea was under some sort of control. But luckily, in 1988, it was moved to category three, which means everyone can actually, you know, grow tea and sell tea. So it opens up actually a new market. And I'm sure that really impacted Mr. Ye's business Absolutely. mentally. Well, let's just ask him. Yeah. Let's hear what he has to say. Uh, so you mentioned that your company cannot sell tea, but what did your company do? Our company is 
，关系是集体经济。嗯，集体经济没有个人的，计划经济没有个人经济。嗯，所以集体经济它又有像这样里面的。有计划的，要上交多少、嗯、啊？这是是 balance sheet from the 1970s。里面有计划的量，计<笑>划你上交多少，实际交交多少，你看几个。所以有计划经济的，你应该生产多少出来？今年要完成任务，不完成任务就你少了很多待遇了，就是分配的其他生活资源。Uh, <笑> it's all planned and all your benefits were closely connected. To the plan, whether you will be able to finish the plan or, or not. Or achieve that goal, right? Exactly. Since in 1988, new policy was taken. So, what did it mean to you personally, to your company, or to the industry? 一旦放开之后，有市场经济了嘛？嗯。所以个人就可以出来销售。一旦出来销售之后，市场就能打开。市场一打开，又促进了生产，再就这个栽培啊。生产这个规模化，所以呢，我刚才看了这张表格，七八年只有十一吨茶，呃，十一总产量只有十一吨，整个茶区，但是到现在多少量呢？一点八万吨，哇，你看多少倍？哇，啊，一万倍啊，不止啊，哈，所以因为自由经济促进了生产，促进了市场。而且能够一让自由之后，每个人都会去尝，都会去推广，市场的推广力度加大了，嗯，需求量知道的人多了，需求量大了，那这个你看，原来的十一吨到现在一点八万吨，这种产值，嗯，是多可怕的事。And this is only one area.、Yeah. And the change is huge. I mean, you、mm. said from tea processing to tea packaging to not taking over this big responsibility of exporting tea.、Um, what was the biggest challenges for you? 过去我们呢就是按计划策划，但是因为你放开的时候有竞争，有竞争你要生存，你就会发挥个人的聪明的才智，为去怎么把它做好。只有竞争才能够提升质量。嗯，提高产量。那么过去呢是散茶，一箱一箱的，嗯，装箱，出口的。那当放开经济之后，作为市国内的市场，它不可能一箱，那就小包装啦。嗯，然后这这包装又是在于精细精细化。那最起码呢，它就二两啊，这样的二两包装。这原来是中茶公司的。呃、uh, ，When was this? Produced. This is from the 70s. Is it still drinkable? Can drink? Can drink? Forty years ago. Forty years ago. Ah, of course. Still, still, very comfortable. Ah, and also very comfortable. Wow. Uh. So this is for export. Export. And how about this one? Uh, this this one is also export, but it is mainly in the vicinity. Ah, there is export and export. It is more in the vicinity. 这是八十年代一个七十年代一个八十年代的，这是 eighties， 啊，这八十年代的。And how about these? How about these? 然后这个呢，这个呢，它是外销，嗯，但是里面呢就又在精细化。过去呢，这个是八十年代，它里面就有这样的包装。哦。Again, this is from the eighties, small packages, and it's all because of the policies changing and the market has been changing. So innovation. This、yeah. is innovation. Now, also with the packaging as well. Yeah. Yeah. But talking about the export, how, how did you do that? Actually, was it possible for you, for your company, to export your own tea to the overseas market? 不行，我们没有出口权。他要配额，国家配额。嗯。只有出广东省茶叶公司才可以出口。我们自己不能出口。我们是下属的加工的基础单位。So how did you do that exactly? How did you export your products? Uh, we just sell it. Ma, put the tea leaves in good condition, then export it to the top. How about right now? Is it completely open up and you can export your product abroad? The country is still controlling the export of tea. It's still controlled by the Chinese government. Even though the Chinese government is controlling the export of tea, it's still controlled by the Chinese government. But we are also making sure that our country is safe. So our country's export department 海关也要对产品的跟踪，嗯，产在哪里？今后如果出事，能够找到什么根源？嗯，所以国家目前对茶叶还是有配额的。
to your company and to you personally, uh, which one is the bigger market now? The overseas market and the domestic market? Which one is bigger? If you talk about export of Chinese tea to other countries, to Europe, like in, in, in Britain or to Japan, mm. probably they need to reprocess the tea they import from China. Or is it getting more like these days, more people in the West drink tea in the Chinese way? Mm. The past 40 years was also uh, the period when the Chinese economy was transformed from a plant economy to a market economy and the impact is tremendous. Just take tea industry as an example. The production of tea in that region in Chaoshan area was only 11 tons in 1978, that was 40 years ago, and now it's 18 thousand tons. Wow, that is very impressive. Mm. Let's see what else he has to say about his tea business. Are you seeing more Westerners accepting the Chinese tea, you know, the traditional way? Now, if we come back to you personally, you've been in this tea industry for 30 something, 40 years. Uh, what do you think is the biggest uh, involvement, the biggest change that has happened to the whole industry? Tajia 那么它有文化的加入 So it's not just a product, it also defines the Chinese culture Cultural as well. symbol. Looking into the 40 years in the future, what would be your biggest expectation? 未来四十年我最大的期待就是文化不能断但是创新不能没有 那么就快速的饼饮，这个是大众化的。还有一种就是高端的这种吃食饼，它可以变成两条路，一种快速消费饼，一种是满足你精神上的，因为不管人类到哪个时候都需要一种精神上的追求。嗯，这个不能没有，
。这我认为应该是这样，才有更大的前途。Well,、uh, the tea market is huge in China, but at the same time, it's also open to different styles. We serve tea in the traditional way, but at the same time, we're seeing tea being served in new ways. I mean, if you go into the downtown part of Beijing, you'll see tea shops in every other block,、mm. and these are not just traditional tea that they're serving. They come in a to-go cup, and you can just buy it for to-go. It's like boba milk tea. They have different flavors: flavored tea, fusion tea. And not only all these domestic entrepreneurs. At the same time, we are also seeing international brands trying to have a little share of the same pie. Exactly. And for example, Starbucks is really tapping into this Chinese market.、Mm. If you walk into Starbucks and you look at the menu, you will see tea underneath coffee. So which is more?、Successful? It's not coffee tea. It's actually tea. So which one is more successful? I don't know. I don't know either. But at least that shows、uh, the policy is also playing a role. You know, and, and the tea business having their impact on on the tea industry in China, and this also is, I would say, the result of the 40 years reform and opening up. Absolutely.、Mm. Covered so far, we paid a visit to a clothing manufacturer, a ceramic、uh, producer, and also a tea master. Now, like we said earlier, we would like to show our audience how the 40 years of reform and opening up have been impacting China's economy through the stories of the three entrepreneurs or business owners. And the conclusion is obvious: the impact is huge. And we only interview three people among the many success stories out there. But these three stories are a reflection of China's economy in the past four years. Indeed. And now we're coming to the end of this special edition.、Uh, we are going to see you again for another episode on the 40 years of reform and opening up policy, with a focus on the cultural side. We'll see you again next time. We'll see you next time. Bye.